It's a special moment in the history of all of computing. It's, uh, we'll talk about it later, but it's arguable, it's possible that the entirety of the world will run on JavaScript at some point. Yeah. <laughs> so like, it, it's like those are, those days, it would, be, it would be interesting if you could just describe actually zooming in on the, how the cake was baked uh, from the, you know, the, the, the several days that you were working on it, what was in your mind, uh, how much coffee were you drinking? Yeah. Were you nervous? Why you freaking out? I'll try to remember it. I mean, you're right. There are these pregnant moments you see in hindsight, maybe they're overrated, but like Hegel sees Napoleon on horseback at, right. at Jena and says, yeah. there's the world spirit, uh, on, on horse. Um, and, uh, I knew that there was a chance to do it. Mark knew, and he was my, you know, executive sponsor. And he was the one, you know, sort of brainstorming how the JavaScript should be right there in the page. That was important for him to say that because I, I thought so too. But a lot of people were like, well, you can't write programming language in the middle of the markup. Mm -hmm. And indeed, there are problems. If you did it naively, you'd see the code laid out as uh -huh. like random gibberish. So I had to figure out how to hide that. And that was a challenge. Is that is that a breakthrough idea? I mean, so you and Mark, thinking about this idea that you just inject code in the middle of the markup. Of the web page. Yeah, it was considered kind of heretical. There was an SGML guru, I forget his name, but he corresponded with me. And at first he was angry. He's like, <laughs> you, you, you should have used a marked section. Why didn't you use a marked section? And I said, yeah. well, SGML marked sections are not part of HTML, by the way, and they're not supported in the browser. Yeah. And so I, I did some hack that was equivalent. And over time, you could do the proper SGML thing. But eventually he came around and it, it was again sort of of evolutionary necessity it was almost like introgression like like you know the the idea um which uh, Lynn Margulies I think helped get across that uh we have to consider mutualism in biology that maybe you know mitochondria were ancient uh prokaryotes that got into the cell and became yeah. beneficial yeah. um somehow uh the, the same sort of thinking applies. Uh, you have to embed JavaScript in HTML. It, it's going to be a good virus. <laughs> it won't so hurt the you. So co uh, the code becomes data in the sense that it just gets carried, uh, it gets car carried. Ca ca carried along. But yeah. is there is there the side of the, so you were focusing on the Netscape at that time. Doesn't the browser have to support, interpret correctly this a mix of HTML yeah. and whatever code? I had to hide it from old browsers, including Netscape 1.1, which was predominant then. So I used uh, uh, an HTML comment but the inside the container that comment lived in the script tag, which is a new element, I could make different semantics in Netscape too, mm -hmm. where those HTML comment delimiters, instead of being multi-line brackets, became one line or essentially one line. So you wrote so JavaScript was written the programming language was written as a comment, a comment for old browsers and a, a set of uh, brackets that were ignored with real code for new, and it was this two-way comment hiding hack, as I called it that was absolutely necessary for us to get off the ground. We couldn't have bootstrapped JavaScript without it. We didn't have scripts that were loaded from a separate file. The only scripts in Netscape 2 were inline in the document. What were the challenges here? What, what, like what, uh, you know, typing, uh, uh, what were the choices you were thinking about? Garbage the collection. Design, garbage collection. I didn't have time to write a garbage collector, so I just, I didn't at first. So the thing was using essentially arenas or what GNU calls obj pools and just would run out of memory eventually. And I added reference counting in a hurry after the 10 days in which I hacked. So after I was in the server team doing HTTP 1.1 and thinking about the language, I finally got transferred to the client team in early May. And that's when I, you know, I got the go sign from Mark and it was like, we, we can't wait because people inside Netscape are doubting. Even people uh, inside Sun are definitely doubting. Bill Joy was the champion, but he was like alone in that, in seeing there was a role for JavaScript as the, the as I call it, the sidekick language, the Robin the boy hostage. <laughs> Frank, <laughs> Frank Miller put it in the Dark Knight Returns. Um, that uh, there was this silly little language that would be the glue language and it could become important over time. And, and you were better off having that complementarity, that pairing of languages, just like Microsoft Stack did with Visual C++ and Visual Basic. So what was the big moment of uh, I'm done? So I had to do a demo. I, I, I forget the dates. I, I think I, for a history of programming languages paper that Alan Wurzbrock did with my help, he did a lot of the writing. Um, I think it was the 10 days from like, Thursday evening through to the following weeks, uh, you know, all, the whole of that week and then into the Monday. Did you get sleep? Not, not, not enough. And I was really uh, going fast because I'd already used a lot of um, C compiler and front end compiler knowledge that I'd gained from undergraduate school. When I started getting into computing uh, as a renegade physics major, uh, people were formalizing more efficient 
uh, bottom up grammars, parsers for bottom up languages. Uh, really, uh, LALR1 was the big thing. And I studied all this and learned how to parse them. And in the end, uh, if you're doing C languages, you often do what, um, what, what, uh, Dennis Ritchie did anyway, which is the recursive descent, uh, parser. You can hand code it. And, um, I did that for JavaScript in a blazing hurry. Mostly got it right. I uh, didn't, you know, have precedence in version problems or other bugs, but I copied a lot from Java and C. And I tried to keep things simple, like the equality operator in the, those 10 days sprint between two objects of different dynamic type said, no, they're not equal, their types are different. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I had internal early adopters and they were using JavaScript to like match a number against a database field that had been stringized. And they said, oh, can't we just have implicit conversion? And like an idiot, I agreed, I gave them what they wanted. I, I was trying to please them and get adoption. And that, you know, broke what, what equivalence relation, um, nature there was to the double equal, uh, you know, there's some edge cases with not a number that break that too, but yeah. it really broke it. Um, having implicit conversions in that operator is something that people still roast me over. <laughs>